it's the spring migration of 2009 and we've both been out in the field for the last week or so watching hundreds of antelope come into Teton National Park. And now we're just back at the Murray Center kind of checking in to tell a little bit about some of the work we've been doing, the things we've seen out in the field over the last five to seven days while the migration has been in full swing. Well, I've been spending the past couple months focusing on river crossings. Round and round that ring I roll. I don't need a window seat. When they crossed the Grove on, it was 75 of them. They just came up to the bank and they were just standing there all wadded up. And then one buck just jumped in and started swimming. I spent the last week backpacking through the mountainous part of the migration corridor. I know every click before the streetcar reaches it. I feel every clap. I ascended up into the Grovant Mountains from the Green River. And what I found up there, I was a little surprised by, is there's a pretty heavy snowpack up once you got to maybe almost 9,000 feet. And in the evenings, I would see groups of antelope come marching up through the snow as high as they could get, but they're just struggling and wallowing in this deep snow that was really soft from from the sun shining on it all day and then right at sundown they'd all turn and run back down as far as they could until they got to dry land again This, the spring feels like migration more than the fall. I mean, these, these pronghorn, they do not have to come to the park to survive. They can stay down in the southern part of their range, but every single one of them, they just want to come here. Like. trail going out into this big snow field on the other side of that notch of trees and then out in that snow field I didn't see any antelope because they had all retreated but there's three wolves out there and I watched the wolves cross the snow field and head up towards Bacon Ridge which is right on the west side of that open park and then I looked a little closer and there's an antelope carcass right out there in the middle of the trail So I think what happened is the antelope crossed the pass in the evening and tried to spend the night out in that open park, but they were bogged down in that deep snow. The wolves came down in the early morning and killed a couple of them, and the rest of them just retreated back. I'd best leave in December, leave my breath mingling with the snow. If May rolls around and the the blooms I may never find my way back home so I was kind of depressed when I got to Fish Creek because I couldn't cross the river the water was too high the weather was turning bad it started to rain a little bit I was just sitting in my tent listening to the rain and not not really knowing how I was going to get out of there because I couldn't cross the river and then the rain broke and the sun came in at an angle underneath the clouds and I walked up on this little hill above my tent and I looked out across like this kind of wrinkled, rolling like ridge line with all these folds in it. And coming over the far edge, maybe a half mile away from me, I saw 15 or 20 antelope. So I just started watching it and pretty soon there's like 80 antelope, 100, 120. And then they're just flowing all the way across this whole ridge line, right towards the hilltop where I'm sitting. And all the sun is coming in under the clouds, hitting the antelope right on their faces and they just keep flowing past me and then pretty soon they get to the the other edge of this hill by Fish Creek and start dropping down the far side of it so they can cross the river. I swing my arms and smile as I step back in the frame Soak up the cobblestones loose beneath my feet 
shuffle through the alleys for a change. Nobody has ever seen that before. It was like all the year and a half, two years of research and effort that we've put into this project trying to figure out how this migration works paid off in that moment because I actually got to see the center of the migration in full force. same day um, that Emmeline was watching the wolves I was setting up my camera traps about 25 or 30 miles straight west. It's a cold day this last day but I'll stretch it as long as I can. There was a group of what was it Emmeline about 30 that we watched um, come through just a couple hours ago come through come into the park and I quick I got my camera set up for this group in a, in a new area that I haven't really photographed at. And I got one good or good photo that I, th I think it's decent. It shows a nice string of them. Here it comes. Um, I got it loaded up. Um, it's with a nice wide angle lens. You can see a string of them. Um, but this, the, the expression on this fawn, or this doe, um, it's pretty cool. She's she's pretty driven to head into the park. But I slip into the Kleinest Cafe Pretend to read a paper two days old Eavesdrop on smoky conversations in the room Sip away the hours on my own When that beam gets broken, each one of these cameras uh, will be taking pictures three pictures a second for six seconds. Then if it gets broken again, it'll do the same thing. This second camera has a little more zoom. It's got the trail from about right here all the way up and it's got the Tetons in the background. Some of them resembling the truth Philosophies debated Stirred by silver spoons With bitter foam and melted sugar so Once it gets tripped, it'll run for eight seconds continuously taking pictures. And most of my other ones, I don't run for that long. So hopefully it produces some nice images. And in the morning, we're going to hike up and and see if and see if we can put up some more cameras and see if we can watch them um, come through these late ones. But the migration is just about over, and it's been pretty cool. Like this has been a totally eye-opening experience. We we both watched the fall and walked the whole corridor in the fall, but this spring migration is like a whole different world. And yeah, I don't know. We've kind of made some new discoveries and seen some incredible things. So. Really have to go. Whoa, in an hour, I really have to go. Okay. Well, we're checking in. From <laughs> like a sixth grader, like, <laughs> reporting it's on the new yeah, 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 I know it is.